All right, folks, this is a quick tutorial about how to use cams and calculate displacement using this little handy-dandy apparatus I've created for you. So today, we're going to kind of, you know, I know on my screen, you're seeing this as well, kind of where my hand is right now. That's the assignment. I'm going to show you how these correlate with each other. So you can kind of ignore that, this thing up here for now. So I'm going to first go to the assignment, which is assignment 8.2, cams and displacement. And a cam is this thing right here. It's this little thing that goes in this axle. And in an engine, that's what determines the displacement or how far up and down it goes. So it's top point minus its low point. So I'm going to download all of these parts here. So i sure my downloads are open. Good. All right, so I'm going to go download here, here, just all the way down the list. Just like that. Okay. And then in my downloads, or if I, I can go to Inventor as well, I want to open up this one that's called Displacement Activity. And if I've downloaded it right, it should be all assembled. We don't have to, we should not need to do any assembling for this. So I'm going to double click there. It's going to open up. And boom. So I got all of the, the pieces I need here. So this is that apparatus thing. It's the angle indicator. A displacement device, I guess. And what this does is it'll, you can turn this around and coordinate with the angle it's at. So at zero, it's here. 30, it's here. Oops, let me switch this over so you can see it better. Um, so this will change its position in the displacement. So right now, it's at zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph what I see here. So right now, my angle is at zero, and my displacement up here is at the four. So over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, using my green marker, I'm going to I'm going to put dots where the zero lines up with the degree. So zero here degrees, so x-axis is degrees, and then this is the displacement on the, on the y-axis. So zero goes to the four, right there. And then I'm just going to slowly move this forward. Next one, so it's at the 30, so I'll go to the 30, and it looks like it makes it all the way to the 5. Right there. 60, it's just almost to the, to the 6. 60 degrees, it's at 5.75. And then at the 90, it makes it all the way. So 90, it's at the 6. And then you can probably predict that it's going to do the same thing just in reverse now. So now I'm going to be just coming down a little bit. Right there. 50. Come straight up. Put a dot there. 180. Is that the 4? Yeah. And then it's going to start dipping down below. So at 1 or 210 is at the 3, right here, and 240 is at 2 and about a quarter, right there, and 70 goes down to the 2, there, and then it starts working its way back up, and then the 360 goes back to right where we started, so back to the 4. So that gives us a really cool pattern here, and you can, most of you are probably kind of waking out like, oh my gosh, it's a sine wave, and you're right, it is. So if I connect these, my position, or my displacement, is essentially a nice little sine wave. So looks like that. So in here, I'm just going to put a little uh, green right there for the color. I'm just kind of making a key. And so my green is equal to the circle. That's how I can keep track of which one is which. So that's how I do this first one. And as I'm doing these, I can switch them out. So for the assignment, you're going to do three of these that are provided for you. Uh, so over here, 
I can see that there is a uh, there's a bunch of different cams. We've got cam eccentric, and we have cam uh, ellipse, egg, hexagon, and snail. So I'm not going to graph them for you. I'm going to show you how to make them appear. So right now, I've just got the eccentric. So I'm going to right-click on this and turn off the visibility. And over here, it says ellipse. I can right-click and say visibility. And that will turn on this one for the ellipse. And then I can graph that. So you'll do three of these. You can use the centric as your first one if you'd like, um, and then any of the other two that are maybe didn't have, have already. The last one is a little tricky. What we've got to do for the last one is we're going to draw our own and make a new one. So in this little space below, what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to follow this these instructions where it says, now switch your own cam design in the space below, then model it in Inventor. Remember the overall diameter to no more than two inches in overall diameter, and make a 0.25 hole in the middle and make it 0.125 inches thick. So right here in the middle, I'm just going to say that's my center mark, and I'm going to make this nice and simple and just make like a square. And when you do this, you'll you know be a little more careful than I am. I'm just kind of doing this fast. Like that. So not the greatest square in the world, but that's close enough. So in Inventor. I'll go back here, and I'm going to make a new one. So go File, New, Part, Create. And I'm going to go Start 2D Sketch. I'm going to try and scooch this over so you can see it a little better. And I'm going to sketch on this plane. And I'm going to draw first my circle. Oh, right there. Circle. Make it 0.25 in diameter. And rectangle two-point rectangle, and I'm going to make this, I'm going to max it out so it's pretty big. I'm going to go two, tab, two, enter. So, oh, actually it has to be smaller than that because this line right here, technically, that's okay, we're good. So I'm going to say finish sketch, extrude, and instructions to do 0.125, enter, and there's that. So just to make this coordinate with my color, I'm going to change the Appearance, and that's blue, lighter blue, so we'll do sky blue dark, and save. And I'm just going to save this somewhere, I can use it again, I'm going to call this my square, cam, there, save, and if you'd like, this isn't required, but if you'd like to, you can put fillets on the corners just to make it a little bit smoother. And that will look pretty good, just like that. I'll say OK. Save it again. And one thing we got to be really careful of is that when we're putting it into here, we have to have some sort of a reference plane. So most of the shapes we're going to use are going to be kind of weird, and it's going to be hard to find a plane that goes right through the center like this one does. So let's get rid of this one really quick. Visibility. And in here, I'm going to use what's called a user coordinate system. So I know that's kind of behind the box here, but it's UCS under the work features. I'm going to click that and bring it over and click right there in the middle. And right click and say finish. So now I've got this little extra coordinate system over here. You can see it's highlighted there. I'm going to hit the and I'm going to pick a plane, not this one, but usually there's more than one that works. So both of these ones will work in this case that goes through it perpendicularly. So I'm going to click that. Ready? And... Go for the next step. So I've got that there. I'll hit Save. Splice my activity. I'm going to place that in here. So I'll go Place. Find my square. Mine's right here. Cam up triangle square. Open. And drop it in right there. Right click and say OK. Now I've got to use a couple constraints to get it onto this piece. So go constrain. And I'm going to want to put this axis onto the axis of the angle indicator. Perfect. That looks good. So I've got that, but they're not linked yet. So they won't spin together. It spins, but not, they're not stuck. So what I'm going to do is get these two planes, this one that's going through the 
angle indicator and this one that's going through the square. So I'll go constrain, just click this one and that one using the mate tool, click apply, cancel, and now I can figure out my office of the four. This one would be about five and a half. Five and a quarter again, four, and then you just kind of repeat that process. And remember that you're graphing, oh, sorry, I put this where you can see better. You're graphing this where it's at the highest point. So for this one, the highest point would be, um, if you're at the 30 right there, it might be useful to put an extra mark on there at the, uh, you know, right in between, between the 30 and the 60, right there. That might be a good thing to do so that you've got the highest point because that's, you know, you want, you'd, you'd miss it if you just did the 30 and the 60. So I would make sure you get the highest point in there to help you draw it as well as the lowest point. So that's pretty much it. And once you've got that, you'll just come over to your graph and you'll start doing the same thing. So my zero right here is at four. So it actually overlaps there. That's okay. Go to my 30 and it's at five and a quarter, it's just a little bit taller. I'm gonna also do my a point in between there. So right between it's at five and a half as the highest. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's right. It's five and a half. This one's gonna go right here. And then the same process will repeat as it comes back down. Now this one, the squares are kind of funny because they essentially just make a speed bump in the road or, or kind of a bumpy road. It'll, if I continue this, it's essentially just going to go like that. And that's, you know, an estimation, a very rough estimation, but you get the idea. Put my blue in there just so I know that that is the square. And that's it. Then you just turn that bad boy into the box and you are done.